Hello and welcome again to my channel. I'm David, a financial analyst for over 28 years. Today, I will clearly explain how seasonal patterns are constructed. One of the most interesting and fascinating aspects of commodities is seasonality. There are several websites by subscription that allow you to know the best seasonality for futures and spreads. For example, you can open the chart and see the average trend of a futures contract or spread over the past 5 or 15 years. However, some clarification is necessary, as many traders are inclined to consider seasonal patterns in the same way as moving averages, with all that follows from it in terms of analysis. In reality, seasonal patterns are very different. They are constructed differently from a moving average, and it's not possible to make all the considerations that technical analysts make about the latter. To understand this better, I will explain how seasonal patterns are constructed, trying to be as simple as possible. Let's say, I want to build the five-year seasonal pattern of the corn futures contract with delivery in July 2023. What you are seeing is the stacked chart for the last five years, from 2018 to 2022. To build the five-year seasonal pattern, the first step is to normalize the individual futures contracts. What does this mean? It means that the values are transformed from absolute to relative. That you no longer see, for example, the corn futures contract at $600 or $650, but at a value on a scale from 0 to 100. The chart shows all five normalized years of ZCN23, where 0 corresponds to the minimum level touched by each futures contract and 100 corresponds to the maximum level. I use this method because what interests us is the movement of the seasonal pattern, not its dimension. All I have to do at this point is to do an arithmetic sum of the five years and normalize the values again, as shown in the chart of the Corn Futures contract five-year seasonal pattern. The five-year seasonal pattern is then stuck by the software into the chart of the futures contract, as you can see in the figure. This is how I or any of you can build a seasonal pattern. Obviously, nobody does all these steps since statistical databases like Seasonalgo or Spreadcharts do that. Now let's see what information we get from them and how seasonal patterns are sometimes mistakenly used. Some of the most common mistakes which I have read, and also some traders have reported to me, that in some courses it's explained that it's advisable to enter long on a spread only if the price is below the seasonal patterns and short only if it's above them. That's completely wrong. Don't consider this nonsense. Just as it's wrong to use seasonal patterns to calculate supports and resistances, stop losses and target profits. As I have shown you, seasonal patterns are calculated in a different way and then stuck onto another chart, so the values shown on the y-axis are only to be taken into account for the current spread, not the seasonal patterns. Another nonsense I have read is, the seasonal pattern has gone up of X points, so the spread has a wide margin of rise. As I said, the seasonal pattern should be considered for its movement, not its dimension. I hope it's clearer now how seasonal patterns are constructed and how they are to be used. This will allow you to avoid errors that would affect the correctness of your analysis. Thank you for watching this video. I hope what you have learned today will help you in your trading. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. And if you are interested in other educational videos on the world of trading and financial markets, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This way, you will be updated with all my newest videos.